Let's now try to model the ARM-1 component of the robotic arm. For convenience, a partial model has already been modeled for you. For that, go to the file menu and click on insert geometry. Navigate to the folder where the ARM-1 DSCO file is saved. Select the DSCO file and import it. The ARM model is imported at the correct location and it does not need any alignment or rotation. We now need to build the remaining part of the model. Let's first analyze the shape and plan how to build the model. Let's look at the technical drawing of this part. It looks like there is a section like the one that we imported. The base circular portion is different from the imported one and has an angular section. So we can copy the imported section. Both sections are connected with each other. So we can sketch the connecting part to connect the two outer sections. Next, the circular section of the component that was copied needs to be edited to create the angular portion. This can be easily done by creating a sketch based on the dimension provided in the technical drawing. The last part is to create the connecting rod at the top. So we have a plan to build this remaining portion of the model. Copy the imported component, connect the two components, create the angular section for the copied one, and finally create the connecting rod. So let's get started. Hide the other components in the model tree. Expand the ARM-1 subassembly and select the ARM-1 component. Right click and select activate component for modeling. First, let's look at the technical drawing. The thickness of the imported component is 60 mm and the gap between the two components is 166 mm. So we need to copy and move the component by 166 plus 60 mm hence 226 mm. Select the move tool. Select the arm underscore 11 body and hold the control key while dragging the body along the negative green axis. Then specify a distance of 226 mm. A copy of the first body is created. Let's now create the connecting body between the two arm components. From the herd, select the sketching option and select the rectangle tool. Select one of the backside flat vertical faces to enter sketch mode. The drawing shows that the length of this section is 630 mm and the width is 166 mm. Set the start point at the top inner point of the left vertical face. Then create a rectangle downwards with dimensions 166mm by 630mm. Switch to 3D mode and rotate the model to view the other side. With the pull tool active, select the newly created surface for pulling. Then select the up to tool guide and select the outer curved face as a target location. Notice that it unites in a single body now. From the drawing, we can see that the lower thickness of the component that was copied is different from the one that was imported. The dimensions show that the thickness is 106 mm. So we need to add 46 mm to the existing thickness. Select the inner face and pull it inward by 46 mm. We now need to create the angular section at the bottom. Select the side face and switch to sketch mode. The drawing indicates that the outer circular section has a radius of 82.5 mm. Select the circle tool, hover over the bottom circle to highlight its center point. Then select the center and create a circle of diameter 165 mm. From the drawing, it can be seen that the two angular lines are tangentially connected to this circle. So select the tangent line tool. Select any location on the left side of the circle to define the start point and then click on the end point of the outer circle as the end point. Now create a horizontal construction line from the center of the circle up to the vertical line to the right. We will use this line as a reference to define the inclination of the other tangent line. Again select the tangent line tool. Click on other side of the circle and then click anywhere on the vertical line. This will display the angular dimension for the line. Click on change angle from the option and select the horizontal construction line as a reference. Specify an angle of 50 degrees. 
This will move the line and you can notice that the end point does not lie on the vertical line. We need to extend the line up to the vertical line. Select create corner tool. First select the inclined line and then the vertical line to extend the line up to the vertical line. If the line is extending beyond the vertical line, use the trim tool to remove extending portion of the inclined line. Delete the construction line and then select the trim away tool to remove the inner circular arc between the two inclined lines. Lastly, create a circle of diameter 450mm. Switch to 3D mode. Now if we look at the drawing, we need to remove the region outside of the angular section. With the pull tool active, select the outermost face and the small corner face for pulling. Pull the two faces inwards to completely remove the material. Next from the drawing we can see that this angular section is located on the inner side and has a thickness of 35 mm. With the pull tool selective, select the angular face and pull it inward by 71 mm. There is a chamfer of 20 mm at the outer edge. Select this edge and using the pull tool and the chamfer option create a chamfer of 20 mm. If you see any curves in the model tree, delete them and then save the file. This completes the bottom angular section of the arm. The next step is to create the connecting rod at the top. Zoom in at the top of the model and select the two inner faces and switch to sketching mode. A sketch plane will be created at the center of the two selected faces. Select plan view to orient the sketch plane. Select the project to sketch tool and select the outer curve to project it onto the sketch plane. This will give the center location for creating a new sketch. Select the circle tool and create a circle of diameter 60 mm. Switch to 3D mode and again delete the curves. You can see a surface created at the center. As the color of this surface is different from other bodies, select arm underscore 11 body and click style painter under the clipboard ribbon. Now click on the newly created surface to copy the body color. From the drawing, the total length of the rod comes out to be 570 mm. Select pull tool, select the circular face, click the pull sides option from the HUD and pull the face by 570 mm. Notice that all the bodies are combined into a single body. Right click in the empty space and click show all to display all the bodies. The last step is to create the shaft holes for the arm body. Right click on the top level in the model tree and select activate component for modeling. Zoom into the central portion. Go to the prepare tab and select the interference tool. It will highlight a couple of locations. Enable the subtract from smaller body option from the options and complete the interference operation. The shaft holes will be created in the arm body. Right click on arm-1 and select hide others to see the change. Display all bodies by right clicking in the empty space and clicking show all. This completes the modeling of the arm body. To complete the assembly, we need to add the remaining component of the full robotic arm. Go to the file menu and open the insert geometry option. Locate the discovery file named robot-arm-asm-tsco and open it. The imported geometry properly fits the other components of the assembly, so no further modification is needed. Remember to save the assembly before closing it. Congratulations, you have completed the design of the robotic arm.